Today, we're going to explore the three critical signals in the immune response, signal one, signal two, and signal three. These signals play a critical role in activating T cells and directing the immune response. In the context of transplant immunology, they serve as key triggers for rejection. Let's break it down step by step. Signal 1 is all about recognition, which is the first step in activating the immune system. It begins when an antigen-presenting cell, such as a dendritic cell, recognizes a foreign pathogen or, in the case of transplants, the allograft antigen. The antigen-presenting cell processes the antigen and presents it on its surface using a molecule called the major histocompatibility complex. For helper T cells, the antigen is presented via MHC class 2, while for cytotoxic T cells, it is presented via MHC class 1. At this point, signal 1 occurs. The T cell receptor binds to the antigen MHC complex, with the CD3 complex playing a crucial role in stabilizing this interaction and initiating intracellular signaling. This binding is the starting point for T cell activation, signaling the presence of a foreign antigen. Next, we move on to signal 2, which ensures the immune response is appropriate and not misdirected, avoiding autoimmunity. Signal 2 requires co-stimulatory signals between the T cell and the antigen-presenting cell, functioning as a three-lock mechanism. The first lock is the interaction between CD28 on the T cell and B7 on the antigen-presenting cell. The second lock involves CD154 on the T cell binding to CD40 on the antigen-presenting cell. Finally, the third lock involves integrins that stabilize the interaction. These co-stimulatory signals activate the calcineurin pathway, leading to the production of the cytokine interleukin-2. IL-2 plays a central role in promoting T cell activation, survival, and proliferation. Without signal 2, T cells become energic and fail to respond. Finally, we reach signal 3, which provides the cytokine environment necessary for T cell differentiation and full activation. Once the T cell has received signals 1 and 2, it relies on cytokines to decide its specific function and how it will respond. IL-2 is a key cytokine in signal 3, promoting T cell proliferation and survival. Other cytokines, like IL-12 or IL-4, guide the T cells' differentiation into different types of helper T cells or cytotoxic T cells. For example, IL-12 directs the T cell to become a Th1 cell, critical for cellular immunity, while IL-4 encourages differentiation into a Th2 cell, which supports antibody production. Signal 3 also activates intracellular pathways like the protein kinase C pathway and the mTOR pathway. These pathways drive the T cell through the cell cycle, enabling it to proliferate rapidly and expand the immune response to meet the challenge. To sum up, Signal 1 involves the recognition of the antigen through the T cell receptor, CD3, and the MHC complex. This step is blocked by the induction agent antithymocyte globulin. Signal 2 ensures proper activation through co-stimulatory molecules like CD40 and CD154, or CD80 and CD86, which are inhibited by bilatacept. The calcineurin pathway, activated during signal 2, can be blocked by calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus or cyclosporin. Signal 3, which drives T cell proliferation through cytokines like IL-2, is blocked by the induction agent basiliximab. The mTOR pathway is inhibited by mTOR inhibitors like sirolimus or everolimus. Additionally, antiproliferative agents such as mycophenolate or azathioprine inhibit purine synthesis, preventing T cells from undergoing proliferation or mitosis. After full activation of T cells, they stimulate these cells, which in turn activate plasma cells to produce immunoglobulins. Therapeutically, B cells are inhibited by rituximab, Plasma cells are targeted by bortezomib, and antibodies are removed via plasmapheresis. Understanding these signals and processes is crucial and enhances our ability to effectively modulate the immune response in transplant immunology. Thanks and talk soon.